Hi and welcome to the channel. So if you got the plank or the Moonlander keyboard from ZSA, you've probably got their email announcing the new tap dance feature. And I was kind of really excited to see this because obviously the promise of four functions in one key, depending on how you, you use the key, is kind of appealing and you think there's got to be some productivity kind of gains to be had there. Uh, but I've always been a little bit cautious of those things that do different things when you tap and hold the key, just because of how much they change the behavior of the key initially. So normally with a key, it will actually fire more or less just you know as soon as it hits that, that actuation point on the way down or at the bottom. Uh, whereas if you're holding it down, it, it can't do that because it doesn't know if you're gonna hold it down when you get to the bottom. And that kind of change in behavior has always troubled me a little bit with those kinds of features. But I thought I'd give it a go and work out what the deal is. Uh, and it is really exciting. It does do some very clever things to avoid that problem. And I'm gonna go into that in this video. So the first kind of setup that you might have is, is setting a hold function as well as a tap function. So as soon as you do that, it actually, obviously, first of all, it will, will stop the ability for you to hold down the key and expect it to repeat the tap character. But I think if you are relying on that, then you kind of, you're already doing something that's not very efficient. So I don't mind losing that. Okay, so we're in RX here and we can see actually just how easy it is to set up the tap dance feature on these keys. So it's just a question of clicking a key and then you can choose the tap dance tab in the editor here and then set up the on tap function by going into edit or the hold and so on with the double tap and the tap and hold. And you can give it a custom label as well, which is obviously useful for these kind of keys where you want it to basically look like your normal key uh, so you know where your layout is. But these are the ones that I've got the command version of the key set up on basically here. So if we just jump into notes, we can see a little bit of how this actually works in terms of the responsiveness. So if I just hit this key, so these are all the command versions of these keys. So there is the delay on the normal tap and you can see it's not showing up on screen the instant I hit the key. But if I type fast, it looks normal because obviously the subsequent keys are just firing the first tap version of, of the previous key. So in this case here, these keys don't have anything assigned to their double tap event in the tap dance settings, but it still looks like the key's actually ruling out the chance of a double tap before it gives us the single tap. So I think it could actually fire this as soon as I release the key. There's no real reason for it to carry on waiting to see if a double tap will fire if no double tap is actually assigned to it. So hopefully they can improve this even further in the future and have it fire immediately as soon as I release the key rather than that little extra delay. So what I've got actually set up on mine is the command plus the tap event on the hold for all of my kind of letter keys. So there's no problem there when you're actually typing normally, it actually looks quite normal except for that delay on the last key. But that's definitely something I can live with just because it's so easy to do things like that. You know, it's <laughs> select all, copy, paste. You know, it's effortless. It really seems effortless. It really feels super powerful when you're using this. It's so nice not to have to keep moving your thumb to the command key. So if you then go ahead and configure the next level in the tap dance key, which is the double tap event, that then obviously changes the behavior because it's now having to listen for a double tap event within a certain time frame, which you can configure. Uh, so that means you can't double tap a key as you might normally. So I actually made the mistake in, in setting this up on my letter keys uh, for F, I did Alt and command and F on the double tap, uh, but it meant that I couldn't type words like stuff because I can't double tap the F. So some keys, it's not gonna work. It's gonna have to be certain kind of keys. It would also rule out things like backspace and, and arrow keys for me as well, because you know, obviously with those kinds of keys, you wanna know that you can repeatedly issue a series of the same key to, to do what you're setting out to do. So uh, the double tap event is a bit more restrictive on the functionality of the key, but it's okay for some kinds of keys. So this is the blog article um, from ZSA on this feature, which walks you through how to set it up and also gives you some great tips, uh, including using the alt and the arrow key on the hold for the arrow keys. So that makes on a Mac, uh, it's probably equivalent on Windows, but that means you hold it down and it will skip whole words. I always tried to use the alt arrow key thing a lot on a Mac, but always find the alt key slightly too awkward to do it. But when I do do it, I really appreciate being able to move the cursor whole words at a time. That is a real productivity tool, that one. This one in particular, this is how you change the, the sort of interval that it looks at to decide if it's a tap or a hold. And you can set that in here. This is the tapping term. So if you want it to sort of give you a bit more time for a normal key press before triggering the hold version, just increase this delay a little bit. 
So I've set up the command events on the hold for all of my letter keys. And it's interesting because obviously if you hang around and you're slightly sluggish on the typing, it will then fire the command version of that key. So having that in the background kind of makes you sort of think in terms of typing faster and keeps your fingers moving. So I think it's quite a good incentive to actually focus on fast typing as well. So overall, really fantastic productivity boost here coming from this new feature and having all the keys set up for the command and the key press version on hold has, has just completely changed the way I use the Mac. Um, things like, you know, in, in a web browser, moving the focus to the address bar by just holding down L. And when I say holding down, it's a fraction longer than a normal tap. It's, there's no extra sort of length of time needed. You know, the, the subtlety is there. You can, it's more like you just think you're pushing slightly harder or slightly longer, that's enough. And, you know, normal typing is fast enough to not trigger it, but that little extra pause is enough to go into the, the command version of that key. So things like L, in the web browser focuses the address bar, C to copy, T to make a new tab, V to paste. You can just do that and the effort seems, well, it at least seems half as, as laborious to do as using the command key for all of that. I know in reality, you could probably just hold down the command key and do all of that stuff, but it, just the fact that you, you know, you're just using your fingertips in the way you normally do, brilliant. It feels like you're going into that extra kind of productivity level when you use the Mac. So really exciting feature. So it's definitely something you can spend a lot of time playing with and setting up exactly how you want, huge power there. So great feature to see coming from ZSA on this one.